Let's take a look at the lineups now, starting with Sydney Olympic. A lot of changes, Andy Harper. Yeah, four big names coming into the lineup. Pa uh, Pablo Cardozo back from suspension, and Aaron Basic back to spearhead the uh, attack with Pablo, back from injury. Scott Thomas, a long-term injury. First game back today, and Chris Sorosic, the captain of the New Zealand team, back after a trip through Asia. So bolstered by those four inclusions, of course, Brett Emerton back from Olympic Games duty as well. Let's have a look at South Melbourne. They're missing a couple of players. Clarkson and Diamichis have not travelled. So uh, a couple more players get their chance. A couple of players that maybe didn't play in Rio. But the guns are definitely Lozanowski and Trimboli with Kovny and Kinsija, the old firepower up front. Great surface to play football, Andy, uh, but the wind might be a bit of a problem today. I believe the wind will die down as the sun sets, but wonderful conditions, a beautiful summer's night, it will turn out to be, and the, and the playing surface is quite good, so uh, both sides like to play good football, and I imagine it's going to be a cracker tonight. Well, the one time that Sydney Olympic did make the finals, it was the year that South Melbourne didn't make the finals in the 90s. Definitely food for thoughts. Here's your match commentator, Mike Cockrell. Thank you very much, Paul Wade. Well, it's a revitalised, rejuvenated and perhaps refocused South Melbourne side who resume their NSL commitments here at the Belmore Sports Ground. We've heard so much about their exploits in Brazil in the inaugural World Club Championship where they were unquestionably a credit not only to themselves and their club but Australian soccer in general. But it's now back to the bread and butter and coach Ange Postacoglu assures us that his players are focused and committed in their pursuit of a third successive NSL championship. A big game this for the home side, Sydney Olympic, just one point out of a possible nine going into this fixture. Branko Cellina has rung the changes, six new faces in the side this afternoon compared to the side which went down to Sydney United in the local derby at Adensor Park last week. The big guns are back to breathe new life into Sydney Olympic's own title aspirations. Olympic, of course, have only won the NSL title once in their long and colourful history. South Melbourne, by contrast, four times NSL champions and very much the team of the last decade. It's going to be the visitors to get the match underway. They are playing in their change strip of predominantly white. No Fausto Diamichis in the South Melbourne lineup this evening. He's back in Melbourne with a bout of the flu. David Clarkson also injured, so Foster Coglu decided against risking him. But the good news is that Goran Lozanovsky was cleared by an NSL tribunal on Friday night, so he takes his place on the right-hand side of midfield for South Melbourne. Olympic, for their part, welcome back. The tigerish Scotty Thomas, whose absence over the last seven weeks with a knee injury really has been keenly felt. Certainly one of the most underrated players going around in the National Soccer League. Scotty Thomas, who gets his first touch of the ball there and promptly puts it over the sideline. But Paul Wade, we uh, are both firm admirers of Thomas's ability. Very much so. Uh, his work rate is never backed out of a tackle in his life. He doesn't know the meaning of the word back out. And uh, I think he he's also adds a, a, another dimension, and that's bringing other players into the game. You can have so many players who've got great touch on the ball, but lack that bit of power and that bit of running and that bit of gusto that gets uh, them into places where others would fear to go. But uh, Scotty Thomas certainly seems to have everything at the moment. He's having a beautiful season, apart from the injuries. Pablo Cardozo, the Olympic top goal scorer, back from suspension for this game as indeed is Brett Eminem, the captain of the Olympic team. In goals, George Bahuts is restored after Jim Curtis broke his toe in the match last week against Sydney United. Here come Olympic down the left through Lindsay Wilson. Thomas with plenty of room in midfield, cleans up. And he's given it away there, Scotty Thomas. So Melbourne now try to press forward on the counter, Trimboli. Glances over his shoulder, gets an overlapping run from Yosefides. That's a superb covering tackle from Ante Juric. Perhaps the form sweeper in the league this season. But uh, Yosefides there involved early, and Andy Harper he had a good look at those World Youth Championships for mine. He was probably the best player for South Melbourne over the three games, and uh, we we'll probably don't give him Steve Yosefides the credit he might deserve. Yeah, he's been uh, 
pretty much outstanding in the couple of years that his the, the last impact he's made on the, the National League over the last couple of years, I should say. And, and he took that form to Brazil and did have a good tournament. You're quite right. And along with Kasija the and the goalkeeper, Paul Jones, the, Chris Jones rather, the three outstanding players for South Melbourne in Brazil, and we look forward to good things on their return. Lozanovsky turns outside his man. Monopolis. Olympic have it back now. Cardozo looks forward. Zorbis against Blatzes. Blatzes strong in the challenges always. Olympic goes. Getting plenty of possession. A lot of noise being made by the travelling South Melbourne fans behind the southern goal here. Lipperotti. Here's Trimboli. Looking wide to the left. A lot being said, Paul Wade, about South Melbourne's indifferent league, league form going into that tournament in Brazil. Many reasons for that, but the man who just touched the ball there, Paul Trimboli, his problems with injury, he spent most of the first 12 weeks of the season on the sideline, and uh, you can really not underestimate how much South Melbourne missed him. Uh, well, the, you don't often say that one player makes a team, but uh, so often in, in South Melbourne's case, it's Paul Trimboli that has. He's so valuable. He's, I think Raul Blanco said it. He's probably the most gifted player he's seen in Australia. Now, that is a big call from Raul Blanco. His vision is just incredible. Cardozo onto the left boot. The shot takes a deflection, and Jones unable to keep that one from going away for the first corner of the match. Chris Jones, who went to Brazil as understudy to the Hungarian import Milan Udvarash, but pressed his own claims, was given a start in the first game of the tournament. It really was a standout for South Melbourne. He returns as undisputed number one. Mendez with the corner. And the head and air from Aaron Basic wasn't a bad effort as well. Zlatko Aaron Basic, who has had a lot of injury problems of his own since returning to Australia. And the times that we have seen him on the pitch, though, he has impressed. And that is a very powerful header from a fair way out. Very powerful header. And one of his other strengths is his ability to find space in and around uh, those three central defenders that South Melbourne have. Looking forward to seeing the runs he makes. Makes it a lot easier for people like the midfielders, like the man on the ball right now, Gabriel Mendez, to find him. Just two goals this season on his return for Zlatko Aaron Basic, a former Sydney Olympic player who has spent a lot of the last eight or nine years in Europe. His last club, KV Mechelen of Belgium. Aaron Basic back up front alongside Cardozo. Franco Cellina will tell you that the side that he has out tonight is his strongest possible team. It's a rare pleasure for him to be able to Put all those names on the one team sheet. And he's expecting results. This is the team which he believes can take Olympic to the championship. Although, Paul Wade, he does not want the team given too much praise as yet. No, it was interesting. You know, he was uh, telling me that maybe we're team heaping too much praise on Olympic, saying that they've got great depth, great players on the park. And he said, well, if we've got great depth, what happened last week when we were torn apart by Sydney United? Well, I really couldn't argue with him, couldn't I? 2 0 loss, uh, although Andy Harper quite rightly said that, you know, it was a fired up Sydney United who were looking to take somebody apart, and it just happened to be Olympic. But uh, he says so often we heap praise too easily on players and clubs in this country, and we should uh, seriously think about it before we make comments. So we'll, uh, we'll do so in due course. Panopoulos, dispossessed by a good covering tackle from Bailey. South Melbourne have it back. It's going to be a different type of game, this one, to the football they've experienced over the last three weeks, South Melbourne. The conditions in Rio de Janeiro, very, very hot. They spent a lot of those games playing without the ball. And in the role of underdogs, a much, much different story. Back home here in Australia's Casija. Puts his shot well and truly wide of the mark. Yes, they resume their 
normal service as favourites in most of the games they play, South Melbourne. And they'll get a lot of possession tonight as well. Something they didn't get in Rio. Michael Kasija. Top scorer for South Melbourne this season with nine goals. Emerton. The pass is asking a lot of Cardozo. Donoski wants to try and shepherd it over the line and does so. So Lozanovsky on the right, Yosefides on the left. Sweeping is Lipperotti in front of him. Blaxis and Orlick. In midfield for South Melbourne, Panopoulos and Gutsoulis. And Triboli in the hole behind the front two of Coveney and Kasija. That's the lineup for Ange Postacoglu. South Melbourne strengthening their squad as well on Thursday with the signing on loan of Andy Vlahos, the former Carlton player who has spent the last six to nine months in Greece, contracted to Panathinaikos. Uh, happy to release him on loan, get some more match practice back here in Australia. A good signing for South Melbourne. Good timing as well. He'll probably be used on the left-hand side of midfield over the rest of the season. Andy Vlahos. His clearance, in fact, did come through yesterday, but Potsokoglu deciding not to risk him as Olympic look for number one. And the chance fell to Aram Basic. The cover was there, though, right at the death. That's a good opportunity for Sydney Olympic. He was onside, Aram Basic. And look at the room here. He took too long, didn't he? Certainly did. What a great steal off Gutzulis. Mendez with the corner for Olympic. Swings it in. Juric appeals for a handball. Referee Nikolov was well placed. Scotty Thomas lines it up. What a start for Thomas. Welcome back to the big time. And Scotty Thomas delivers big time. Seven weeks out with injury. And Thomas crowns his comeback with a goal right out of the top draw. Well, you don't come better than this. We've seen some great strikes outside the 18-yard boss. Good vision here by Lindsay Wilson to set him up. Beautifully positioned. What a strike. Chris Jones had no chance. Couldn't even get his hands up. The perfect start for Sydney Olympic. And a great goal and from Scott Thomas. Just the fifth goal he had scored in the National Soccer League. Possibly his best. Ten minutes gone. Sydney Olympic 1, South Melbourne 0. Andy Harper, a few claims as well for a handball from Urich there in the lead up to that goal. South Melbourne might feel a little bit aggrieved. Yeah, I couldn't get a, a good view of it from here, Mike, but uh, they didn't clear the corner as well as they ought. In fact, they defended very well in Brazil, and I'll, I'll refrain from making too many references to the tournament in Rio, but they cleared those situations immaculately uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they got caught out. Then Lindsay Wilson, as Wadey correctly pointed out, a beautiful tee-off, absolutely perfect, in fact, and uh, launched onto it, Scott Thomas, didn't he? And welcome back to the National League, Scotty Thomas. The home fans finding their voice now. We cannot understate the significance of this match for Sydney Olympic on top of the league, but the gap has narrowed to just one point as Emerton strides forward, cuts it back, Cardozo, and South Melbourne living dangerously. They've been cut to pieces at the moment, South Melbourne. The sheer pace there. Oh, Brett Emerton is what took him around the goalkeeper. Another corner for Olympic. Played out to the edge of the area this time. Wilson, he tries his luck. And some relief for South Melbourne, who, with a reshuffled defence, really are struggling at the moment. All of a sudden, Sydney Olympic carving out a few very promising openings.
Perotti and Orlick go for the same ball. Or wait, interesting that Yosafidis, who spends more time playing a sweeper for South Melbourne than any other role, he's been pushed out to the left this evening because of the absence of Fausto Diamichis. And that has handed the responsibility of organising that defence to Robert Lipperotti. Is that an issue at this particular point in time? Well, I think it is, Mike, to tell you the truth. I mean, Lipperotti's not the most experienced footballer in the world, and I'm not quite sure whether he's got the biggest mouth in the world. And one thing that uh, Iosifidis does is he organises the two big men in front of him. Now, Lipperotti's got a huge responsibility ahead of him, especially now they're 1-0 down under a bit of pressure to make sure he gets it organised and quickly. Lozanovsky with a corner, unmarked in the near post. Completely unmarked was Trimboli. And George Bohutsos, quite rightly, is absolutely livid with the marking there. That is not up to the required standard to leave Paul Trimboli in that much room. Look at that. How many times has Trimmer scored goals from there? Everybody looks at Paul Trimboli and thinks, well, he's never going to get on the end of a cross, so they leave him alone. The number of times he's knocked one in at the near post, and I think the grand final was a perfect example of that. There's Paul Trimboli involved in a neck-and-neck neck race with Andy Harper to see who's going to get the 100 goals. Trimboli on 97, Harps, you're on 94, I think it is. Who's going to get there first? Well, I'd like to think it was me, Mike, but I didn't <laughs> realise it was that close. And uh, we played Trimmers four times through the course of the season, so I'll be setting out to stop one bloke in particular. Here's a chance for Trimboli again. South Melbourne responding in the style of champions. Gutzulis with a shot. That's blocked by Olympic. Yosefides now. Goes deep, and that's going to be left by Scott Bailey. So a little bit relief, a little bit of relief now for Sydney Olympic. Yosefides. A revelation in the World Club Championships, but now down back to earth here at Belmore as indeed is the entire South Melbourne team. Ange Postacoglu is confident that his players haven't returned from Brazil with any sort of egos, Paul Wade. He says they haven't lost sight of the primary objective. Having said all that, and we hope it's true, the whole hype and glamour surrounding that tournament is probably going to affect a few players, particularly the younger ones, isn't it? It's inevitable, really. Yeah, I mean, you'd like to think not, but obviously we're all different. We all react in different ways. But I think the more experienced guys out there would see what they've done in Rio as a... It's almost a pump-up. They, they want to come back and show the Australian public on Australian soil that they can do it. And... Uh, I don't know, uh, coming back from national team duty for a, at least a couple of weeks, you were pumped, you were quicker, you were sharper, you wanted to play, uh, you wanted the ball a lot more, but unfortunately then you fell into the uh, same old paths. Edmonton there out muscling Yosefides with the ball to Aaron Bassage wasn't the best. Aaron Bassage is making some good runs along the front line there for Sydney Olympic. He's getting into space. What's required of him. Here's Emerton. Emerton tangles with Gutsoulis. The free kick goes away of South Melbourne. Well, probably 50-50 there, really, but Simon Nicola found in favour of Gutsoulis. Thomas snapping away at the heels of Paul Trimboli. Although the sun is out, the conditions here are quite comfortable, about 19 degrees or so. A southerly wind is cooling the situation. Nowhere near as hot as we saw in Brisbane last night. Pitch also much improved. Andy Harper, you're close to it. Uh, we gave this surface a fair bit of stick early in the season, probably deservedly so, but uh, we should pat the ground staff on the back for uh, the job they've done since because it uh, is a much improved playing surface out there. Yeah. 
and I think you'll notice is that the pictures are showing that occasionally some sand does kick up, uh, but I don't think it's going to detract from, from the actual playing surface itself and the ability of the ball to roll from foot to foot, and it's, uh, it's going to be some good footing, good football to watch, and it's already started fantastically. The first 17 minutes have been uh, really worth watching, capped off, of course, by that goal from Scott Thomas. Lipperotti into the channel looking for Coveney. Warren Coveney, the Kiwi International. He'll probably find himself in the same areas of the park tonight as his national team captain, Chris Zoracic. Chris Zoracic played for the All Whites on Friday night in Auckland against Korea. The Koreans getting up 1-0 on that occasion. Warren Coveney, though, not used by New Zealand for that one. Ken Dugdale, the New Zealand coach, deciding to give Vaughan Coveney a rest after his exertions in Brazil. No such luck for Chris Zoricic, though. So it's been a tough schedule for him. His second game in 48 hours. Yasapedes. Katsoulis. Yasapedes getting forward more often now. Strong challenge from Mendez. And the referee says it was a clean one. Juric chips it forward over the head though of Aaron Basic. Handball there against the Olympic striker. Somewhat of a surprise to see Zlatka and Basic return tonight. His groin problems have been overcome a little bit quicker, perhaps even, even the player had expected. Bailey. Zoracic giving the man marking job on procedure tonight as Trimboli goes down under the challenge of his marker, Scotty Thomas. A few good matchups tonight. Thomas versus Trimboli. Zoracic against Kersager. Kobani against Bailey. And say it so often, Paul Trimboli with that low centre of gravity. Might be the biggest bloke in the world, but geez, hard to knock off the ball. You're absolutely shocked when he gives the ball away, really. It doesn't matter how much pressure the opposition are putting on him. His little feints, his dinks. Uh, really yeah, lose a marker easily. South Melbourne with the free kick. Kasidis there, so too Lozanovsky. Lozanovsky may go for the curling shot around the wall by the look of his stance. There's been a bit of pushing and shoving in that wall, spotted by Simon Mikolev. Here's the chance. In fact, Lozanovsky adjusts the run up straight into Mendez. Olympic clear the lines. Josephides goes over the top. The flag is down. And a goal kick for Olympic. I know the game's only young, but that man there, Goran Lozanowski, he's got to get himself involved in the game. And he's probably up against one of the, the fittest men in the National League in Lindsay Wilson at the moment. Not the most technically gifted, but boy, he can't half motor. And he's more often than not motoring in the positive half of his... Uh, of the ground so it's going to be tough for Goran to psychologically turn him round and make him think that he's got to do more defending today than attacking 21 minutes gone Olympic leading one goal to nil the goal scorer Scotty Thomas after 10 minutes a big welcome back after a couple of months on the sidelines for him splendid strike South Melbourne are not the two times defending champions for nothing. They will be far from phased by the scoreline, the visiting team. And they have responded well to that setback. Here they come again through Trimboli. Gutulis. Kersajat has got goal side of Zoricic. And the referee waves play on. Well, the benefit of the doubt there, really, for Zoricic. Jones miscues that clearance. 
Chris Jones, who to knock back a few fairly exciting offers after the tournament. Decided to remain with South Melbourne for the rest of the season. It's been a meteoric rise for Chris Jones. Has spent a long time as understudy to Michael Petkovic before this season. Two seasons, in fact, without a game. Or just one game, in fact, I think it was, before Petkovic departed the club on the eve of the new season. Then he found that Ange Postecoglou had gone out and bought another goalkeeper in the shape of Milan Udvara. So Chris Jones has served his apprenticeship and shown real professionalism in just working at his game and waiting for the break to come. It's come in a big way now. South Melbourne with another free kick to be taken by Panopoulos. In fact, he's going to leave it for Lozanovsky. Lipperotti's gone forward, so too Blatsis and Orlick as it comes in from Lozanovsky. Out comes Bahutsis. Very much on notice, George Bahutsis. Dropped last weekend for Jim Curtis, but a real tragic piece of luck for Jim Curtis. He broke his toe in that game, so Bahutsis gets a second chance, but Branko Cellina making it quite clear he wants an improvement from his goalkeeper. As Lozanovsky's back pass is left short, Aaron Basic, well, a chance goes begging there. Cardozo was the target. Lozanovsky just took his eye off the situation there. Aaron Basic able to steal in on that back pass. And possibly should have done better from here, Aaron Basic. Cardozo was calling for it in the middle. They have themselves a corner though, Sydney Olympic. Mendez goes short to Cardozo. Lozanovsky battling away. Bailey does well to get in front of Coveney there. Jim Bowley shakes off his marker with relative ease. Lozanovsky. Mendez. Bailey just shielding his eyes from the setting sun. It's going to be a city Olympic throw. Vaughan Coveney, who came so close to a goal he might have remembered for the rest of his life against Manchester United, the shot hitting both uprights before rolling away from the goal line. And I'm sure whatever else Vaughan Coveney does in his career, a goal against Manchester United would have been right up there with the personal highlights. Yeah, they don't come bigger than that, do they? The best team in the world, they were called, if uh, he just scored it. Nobody would have been able to take that away from him. Good sealer striding forward. Kasidja out to his right. Coveney go through the middle. But Zoricic gets the first challenge in and recovers well. Mendez and Juric. Working well, the crowd like that one. Maybe a little bit too ambitious there from Mendez. Hands it back to Lozanovsky. There's a 
free kick in favour of Paul Trimboli. He is going to get no breathing space at all this evening from Scotty Thomas. Josephides too much on the cross. Passage caught there by Yosafidis. Olympic have the free kick. Mendez over the ball. Juric has gone forward. So too Scotty Bailey. Chris Jones is aware of that particular threat. Mendez with the free kick. Touch came off. Blacks this. Only as far as Emerton. Oh, you could hear the call from the other Olympic players. Emo play it. They felt the cross should have come in from Brett Emerton. Bailey. Mendez gives away the free kick for his challenge on Gutsoulis. Maybe a tug of the shirt spotted by Simon Mikolev. Shadows lengthen here at Belmore. Monopolis gets there first. Coveney against the keeper. Chance here for South Melbourne. Well, a real opportunity there for South Melbourne to equalise. And Kerr Seja couldn't put it away. Coveney causing a lot of the problems with his aerial presence. Good work as well from Panopolis. South Melbourne looking for a goal to even things up here. Gutsulis pushing forward. Tom Zoricic helps Olympic get the ball away. Andy Harper, this is going to be a tough ask this game for Chris Zoricic. Not only did he play on Friday night in Auckland, but uh, he was in China the week before, so he's done a lot of travelling. He's played three games in the space of a week. He's up against the reigning champions. He's up against a very good player, Michael Casida, as well. Yeah, and he's got a couple of niggling injuries as well, Zoro, but uh, he's a quality man and a quality player, and there's no doubt that uh, he'll rise for this occasion. And South Melbourne, over the last couple of minutes, are just trying to take the... the uh, the blunt out of Blunton, rather, uh, Sydney Olympic by just keeping possession of the ball and uh, making Sydney Olympic chase it a little bit, hope, hoping to take the edge off their attack, which has been, for the most part, quite sharp. Comes that attack once again, this time through Emerton. Thomas goes deep. Aaron Bassage is waiting. In there first, though, was Nick Orlick. Zorbis out muscled in midfield. Lozanovsky. Panopoulos chested down by Trimpoli. Great idea. And that'll be the quickest player in Australia, Paul Trimpoli, but for speed of his thought he's the quickest going around isn't he? He sees options that few other players in this country at least can. Well that's why Raul Blanco gets so excited when Paul Trimboli is playing because of that fact he sees situations so much earlier than anybody else that what you actually see when he's got the ball you think wow that was easy it was all his vision it was all his positioning that made it easy and uh, 
that's what separates the very good players from the ordinary ones. Wilson strides forward. It's going to be a corner. John Blatis gulping in the air. Well, they only came back from Brazil on Tuesday, South Melbourne. So they've only had five days to recover from a fairly lengthy flight over 20 hours flying time from Rio back to Melbourne as the corner comes in and cleared up the line by Jones appeals for a goal from Sydney Olympic but the assistant referee says that did not cross the line and it's going to be a corner and said let's have a look at this replay a terrible miscue Jones did very very well and the assistant referee on this side very firm in his ruling, no goal. So a good save there from Jones to prevent goal number two for Olympic. Mendez with the corner. Zorbis. Cleared by Nick Orlick. Orlick playing against one of his former clubs. Thomas thinks about the cross, goes into the feet instead. Just over 10 minutes left until half time here at Belmore. Olympic, the home side. Their nose is in front. Good work here from Brett Emerton. Needs a quality cross. Aaron Bassett is in the middle. Waiting for it as well was Cardozo, but away there by Con Blatzis. Just as Olympic were looking for goal number two. Orlick with a free kick. Coveney gets the flick on. Gets it back as well. From Kosija. Now Yosefides. Coveney wanted it played into that gap there. Just on the edge of the area. Wilson onto the loose ball. Cardozo. Here's Zorbis. Cuts inside. Mendez. Gets it back from Aaron Basic, but the ball directed towards Cardozo was well cleaned up by South Melbourne, and they respond now through Trimboli. Offside against Aaron Bassis, but a lot of people on the ground have a different view of that one, Paul Wade. You yes, included. Indeed, I do. Um, the Osipides has stepped back right in front of the linesman. I'm not quite sure whether he was a bit confused about who was offside where, but I think the Osipides played him on then. Trimboli, Orlick, Lesafidi showing a lot of the ball to Aaron Bassett, but Orlick was in smartly. Lipperotti now. Zorbis with a little bit of room now in midfield. Emerton. Aaron Bassett wants it played inside. Unmarked is Mendez. Well, how often do you see that? 
The first touch of Gabriel Chichi Mendez was a poor one. That's almost a collector's item in itself. Great opening there for Sydney Olympic. Mendez in acres of room, but for one of the few times in his life, his touch let him down. Look at that corner count, seven to one. That says a lot about who's doing most of the work in the final third. It is the home side. So far, just one goal, though, to show for their efforts. And it comes from Mendez. Jones, uncontested, takes the ball. That was a real good opportunity, that one. That wasn't a poor wide for Mendez. Yeah, it's... I don't know. He always takes balls with the outside of his foot, Andy. Uh, on that occasion, you think it might have been the, the inside of the foot might have given him a better surface to control it on? Well, possibly, but uh, he's a master at his own technique and he's been one of the best this season. And I'm not going to start telling him how to play football. Bohutus out to challenge Coveney. And the decision goes... For a Sydney Olympic throw. We're taken by Zoricic. Trimboli. Zoricic's clearance comes off the Seja. going to be a South Melbourne corner. Just over five minutes left for the defending champions to get themselves on the score sheet here before half time. Lozanovsky with the out swinging corner. Blatsis is there. So too Orlik. Bohutis in first. prevents a second corner there. Okay. Demerton. Now Mendez. Tend to just keep hold of the football here. Zorbis tries to thread it through. The white shirts get back in numbers, and away comes the sweeper, Liberotti. Now Coveney wants to get it back from Kersija. Bailey wet it well. The back pass, though, is short. And George Bahutsis. Good awareness of the situation there from the Sydney Olympic goalkeeper. South Melbourne, no press forward again. Here's Trimboli. Coming off Cardozo. The Hootsis will get there in time for Sydney Olympic. Free kick in the centre of the park for the challenge on Panopolis. going for the man marking option defensively anyway think about that in a moment as Gutierrez goes down the left hand side that's gone over the line for a significant throw yes uh, specific jobs tonight given to Scotty Thomas, Chris Zoricic and Scott Bailey Paul Wade your view on that well, it's worked for Branko Kalina before. Uh, I can't remember what match earlier in the season, but he specifically said it was 11 one-on-ones out there. It suited the situation. I played it, and we won. And he's obviously gone with the same idea today. Emerton. It might fall for Cardozo. 
And he's offside, according to the assistant. So it wouldn't have counted, but... Interesting to see that one again, because Cardozo is convinced he was onside as this ball came through. Probably offside there for Cardozo. That's the right decision. from Olympic Monopolis goes towards the feet of Kasija South Melbourne probing patiently not in too much of a hurry South Melbourne as Cardozo finds Wilson only Aaron Bassage is forward though now the support arrives from Cardozo it's a good ball chance here well blocked though by Nick Orlick Still a chance for Olympic. Mendez. Still going, Mendez. What a goal from Chichi Mendez. Magic from the Maestro. Brings the house down. You'll go a long way to see a better piece of individual brilliance than that provided by Gabriel Mendez. The ball on a string, pass one and two, inside three. The opening was there, cool head, great goal. Olympic two, South Melbourne nil. Well, I wonder, Mike, if we should ask Wadey about Chichi's technique on that occasion. Wasn't that something special? And uh, they've defended poorly on occasions this half South Melbourne, but in that particular instance, they were just taken apart by a piece of majestic dribbling. And that can do, uh, a good dribbler can do that to any side and any, any team in the world. And uh, it was great to watch. 2-0 for City Olympic and just rewards for their first half effort. They've been really good. And very cool finishing as well at the end of it from Mendez. So, so South Melbourne now. It's a big ask. Josephine's looking for a swift reply. Coveney. The challenge out from Bailey. Olympic full of confidence. Mendez. Cardozo down the line. That goal will do a world of good for Mendez's confidence. Franco Chalina, a little bit unhappy with his effort last week at a Densor Park, but he's responded like a true professional. It's his third goal of a very productive season. And although it's probably a little bit premature to talk about Mendez back in the Socceroo frame. You wonder on the basis of how he's playing this season, how long Frank Farina will take before he starts to take a very close look at Gabriel Mendez in the green and gold. Cardozo, Zorbis running out of room. We're into stoppages at the end of the first half, and what a first half it's been for Sydney Olympic. Well, 2-0 up and two fantastic goals, and the party pieces come out with a minute to go before half-time, and there's no better occasion than to pull them out, but uh, Sydney Olympic have been fantastic in this first half. Their work rate has been incredible. The intensity with which they've closed down the South Melbourne players has really laid the platform for this uh, good 2-0 lead going into the break. And there is the half-time whistle from Simon Nicholas, so a buoyant Belmore sports ground as the home team, Sydney Olympic, Stay on course for a much-needed victory here. Two goals of the highest quality. The first from Scotty Thomas. The second, a piece of individual brilliance from Gabriel Mendez. And South Melbourne on their return from the World Club Championships. Brought down to earth at least temporarily. The half-time score here at Belmore is Sydney Olympic 2, South Melbourne 0. Welcome back to the Belmore Sports Ground, Andy. I can tell you it is buzzing at the moment. What a good feel. They've uh, enjoyed the first 45 minutes. We'll try and analyse that for you right now. Andy Harper joins me on the sideline. Andy, uh, I guess 
Have we answered any questions? Are South Melbourne up to it for the next 17 rounds plus finals? Yeah, I think I think they are. Certainly they've got the personnel to do that. They had a couple of good patches uh, where they kept possession of the ball and, and tried to take the edge off Sydney Olympic, but I really think you have to pay homage to the Olympic effort in the first half. They closed South Melbourne down with regularity, with intensity. They pinched the ball at crucial parts of the, cr crucial parts of the field and they launched into counter-attacks which were quite potent. And over and above that, of course, they scored two wonderful goals. And uh, South Melbourne must, must start to wonder every team they play against is scoring fantastic goals to put them up behind in particular games. So uh, they got a couple of questions to ask for themselves, certainly. But Sydney Olympic were fantastic value in that first half. Yeah, it's tough being the reigning premiers. Let's have a look at the stats. Alarming number of corners for Sydney Olympic. Seven against two. Number of fouls. That's amazing stat. Uh, 11 for Sydney Olympic. And again, only two for South Melbourne. I guess, really, Andy, that suggests they've got a lot of possession, South Melbourne. That, but, but they're really not doing anything with it in that front third. They're getting closed down very quickly, as I said. And that foul count shows it's Sydney Olympic are closing down with purpose and with intent and they're giving away the occasional foul but it's suiting their purposes at the moment. And their formation is quite an interesting one today. They're playing a very condensed midfield. There's not a lot of width out on the right hand side and Brett Emerton who might start from a wide position is making diagonal runs in and when they don't have the ball Sydney Olympic are playing a very condensed midfield close to their opposition, closing the players down, winning possession and then attacking with that quite a degree of fluency and it's good to watch. Yeah, it certainly is. It was only the 10th minute when Scotty Thomas got himself on the score sheet. And what a goal it was. You'd be happy with this one, Andy? I'm happy with anything that goes in the goal off my boots, in the right goal, that is. But uh, Lindsay Wilson's assist here, the immaculately weighted and beautifully set up for Scott Thomas. All he had to do was latch onto it, which, of course, he did perfectly. You question the, the clearance from the 18-yard box. I, I know maybe I'm searching for answers, but okay. the sun on that side was a real problem in that first half for South Melbourne. It possibly wasn't. They had the wind in their, fa in their face as well, which was swirling the ball around a little bit. But I think in truth, they haven't really defended with the, the sort of uh, effect that they've shown that they're able to defend uh, in football matches. And, and they've come a bit unstuck. And that first goal, if anything, was a poor tenth of the way the first half was going to unfold. They got caught out a couple of times. Whilst the second goal wasn't so much a result of bad defending, it, it was uh, it, it gave the indication uh, in the scoreline, at least, of what Sydney Olympic have deserved from the first half. Let's continue with the highlights of the first 45 minutes. Tremendous action here, again, with a corner, a very poor clearance. But Chris Jones just got there. It must have been the shot. Sun, surely. You'd, you'd think so, and uh, Loza got caught, although, in fact, the sun probably would have been over his shoulder, then it was, it was all swirling, and uh, the ball would have been swirling around in the air, and Loza just lost it, and, and got it, not a very good connection on it, and Chris Jones reacted well, but they were up against it, really, and they, they looked to be a little out of sync in defence in, in South Melbourne in the first half, and they really need to get that sorted out. Yeah, it was their strongest point in Rio. Now, one-on-one, -on -one, Branko Kalinas decided to go one-on-one -on -one all over the ground, I can see from up there anyway. Uh, seems to be working so far. Yeah, well, it, it means that uh, they're never too far away from their nearest opponent, and they can they exert that sort of pressure when they don't have the ball from that sort of position, and it's working very well for them. Well, let's continue again with the uh, Cardozo this time. Caught offside again in that first 45 minutes. But Brett Emerton, for me, he's the danger. He's one man who is switching from side to side and making a real nuisance of himself. I don't know whether Pablo was offside on that occasion, but certainly Brent Emerton has caused a few problems. Yeah, he is, and it wasn't quite what was intended, that last move, but Emo has been going well. And interesting on the offside rule there, I think Pablo was probably onside when Phenopolis was involved, and, and the balls have been miscued by Steve Phenopolis, which, the way I see it, probably puts Pablo onside. Never, never mind, it wasn't uh, to result in a goal-scoring opportunity, but an interesting little highlight, and, and Emo has been quite outstanding in patches in the first half. It's good to see him back to some good form. Now, you asked uh, about Gabriel Mendez's uh, first touch and what I thought. Well, I thought this was first class indeed. Number of players he took on, beat one, beat two, dinked inside the third one, and a class finish. Uh, I guess he, he's answered all my questions. Well, the finish was fantastic. The lead-up was even better, and uh, he does that ever so well, Chichi. He runs to a defender and throws the right foot as though he's going to pass or chop the ball in another direction or indeed shoot and, and he c catches the defenders off balance. He did it twice in that one movement and then slipped through Liparotti, I think it was, on the third occasion and the finish to match the lead up. It was wonderful stuff. Well, South Melbourne have got no more excuses. The sun has almost set here at the Belmore Sports Ground. We'll be back with the second half right after this.
Welcome back to the Belmore Oval, where South Melbourne have the task in front of them. They trail by two goals to nil as we approach the start of the second half. The defending champions in all sorts of trouble after conceding a second just before half time to a superb piece of skill from Gabriel Mendez. Olympic, I'm sure, though, will have no sense of complacency. They know what a good side South Melbourne are. And they expect and they will receive, I'm sure, a strong response from the visitors, particularly in the early stages of this second half. Sun almost setting behind the grandstand here at Belmore to make life easier for spectators, players and perhaps even commentators. Sydney Olympic, just one point out of a possible nine going into this one. Their gap at the top of the National League narrowed to a single point. A host of teams now on 29 points. Perth Glory, Carlton and Newcastle among them. And they need a win here, Olympic, to secure top spot, at least until the next round of fixtures on Australia Day. Wollongong Wolves, who are playing today, a win for them and a loss here for Olympic. Could see the Wolves go top for the first time in 12 years. So Olympic will be aware of all those permutations. As indeed will South Melbourne be for a host of different reasons. They are on 18 points going into this match. Eight points outside the top six, although they do have a couple of games in hand on a number of teams inside that finals scenario. But they have to get a move on South Melbourne, having had their break, if you like, in Rio. They've got a heavy schedule, five games in the next 12 days. That's enough to test full-time professionals, let alone part-timers. Well, that's what they like to, to be considered full-time. Well, this is going to be a big test. Latsis with a long throw, away by Zoricic. These two teams go around again on Wednesday evening at the Bob Jane Stadium in Melbourne. First time South Melbourne will be playing before their own fans since returning from Rio and the club confidence of a big crowd for that one. There might be an element of revenge as well unless South Melbourne can find a couple of goals here. Zoricic contesting possession strongly as Mendez is manhandled by Gutsoulis right under the nose of the referee. Away by Liparotti. Emerton over the head of Aaron Basic, chested down by Blatsis. Trimboli. Chance here if Kobe can get it wide. He can't. Good covering tackle there from Olympic. Here's Zorbis. And a nice switch from Chris Zoricic. Well, I'm sure it's a positive vibe in the Sydney Olympic camp at the moment. To hear what uh, was said in the dressing room at half time. Down on the sideline with Andy Harper is the injured Sydney Olympic skipper Peter Tsikenis. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Pete, a couple of uh, excellent goals in the first half by your team, Mark. Yeah, it was good to see. Um, you know, we're putting it together. A few nice uh, moves uh, down the middle of the park and uh, two beautiful taking goals. Certainly, it seems that uh, Sydney Olympics' approach tonight has been to, to out-muscle and out-pressure uh, the South Melbourne opponents. Would that be a, a fair estimation? Yeah, we, we see it as uh, we're at home and we, we'll, we'll take the game to any opposition that comes to, to Belmore. And um, the guys have done really well. Uh, started off... Uh, uh, great, and uh, got two goals to show for it. The vibe at halftime must have been very positive, but uh, the warning from Branco was what for the second half? Yeah, obviously South Melbourne are going to want to score a goal early in the, in the second half to get them going again, and, and I think the first 10, 15 minutes is something uh, that we're looking at to uh, to keep them out, and, uh, you know, we don't want to drop back too far. We want to attack them and keep them out as much as we can. We'll see you with a free kick off the wall.
And a brief update on your injury progress, Pete. Yeah, I had an arthroscopy uh, last Tuesday. Uh, it's coming along uh, quite well. Just doing a lot of swing work and uh, hopefully be back uh, playing in uh, four weeks or so. We wish you, wish you all the best for your recovery and to the side. Well done. Back to you, Mike. Thanks very much. We have it from Peter Tsikenis, who, when he does get himself back on the park or available selection, might be a bit hard for him to get into the side the way Olympic are playing at the moment. It's exactly what Branko Cholina wants, of course. The sea just turns onto the football. The deep cross headed back across the face of goal by Blatsis. Olympics still haven't really cleared the danger. Here's Panopoulos. Coveney. Well read though by Bailey. But South Melbourne continue to press. Good pressure here from the visit is away eventually by Verhutzis, so South Melbourne having a good spell here in the opening stages of this second half, as we had expected. They'll come out of the blocks in the second half to try and claw at least one goal back end. Throw a different complexion on this match. Platters with a long throw towards the near post, straight off the boot of Trimboli. Paul Trimboli hampered by knee problems throughout the first 12 or 13 rounds. Seems to be back to fitness. Well, we've heard from Sydney Olympic. Let's hear from South Melbourne. Down on the sideline once again with Andy Harper. This time, the assistant South Melbourne coach, Carl Halford. Hello, Carl. Welcome. Uh, not the sort of defending in patches that uh, you spoiled us with with your time in Brazil. No, I mean, disappointing to concede the first goal in the first 10 minutes. Um, I thought we were a little bit unlucky. I thought we could have had a handball decision for us and the ball broke and the lads took it away well. Um, we've gone to the other end later on in the half and we've been unlucky ourselves. I think Siege had a great strike and goal. It was probably goal bound and um, was blocked by hand. You know, we could have had a penalty there ourselves. But I mean, the second goal right at half time, you know, another bad time to let a goal in. I mean, great television, but again, bad defending really. Yeah, nicely putting out. Chance here for Aaron Bassett. Well, if it was hard for South Melbourne a few seconds ago, it's become almost impossible now. And the tenacity of Slatko Aaron Bassett rewarded with goal number three. He tucked it away with a true poacher's instinct. And a huge ask now for South Melbourne. Slatko Aaron Bassett, his third of the season. And have a look at that scoreline. Again, perhaps poor defending here from South Melbourne. And the rebound fell nicely for Aaron Bassett, who toe poked it past Chris Jones. And delight for Aaron Bassett's despair for South Melbourne, and uh, I'm sure for Carl Helford down there on the sideline. Yeah, Kyle was just reaching for the razor blades then, Mike. So, <laughs> unfortunate timing. Sydney Olympic have uh, set out to really pressurise you, certainly in the first half. Didn't give your players any time on the board whatsoever. What can you do to counter that? Yeah, credit to Olympic. I mean, obviously, they're, they're aware we only got back on Tuesday and probably thought we might have been a little bit leg-weary and have gone about the job quite well early doors. Um, but, if, you know, I thought we handled the first half very well, apart from conceding that early goal. Um, the rest of the first half, you know, we're playing against a very strong breeze. And I think the only other save Jones had to make was an, a bad back pass from Lozanowski. And so, you know, we basically played the game out in the first half very long until conceding that goal right in half time. So some insight now onto the South Melbourne bench just quickly. Three down. Have you still got a large chunk of the second half to go? What sort of cards can you play from here? Yeah, certainly. I mean, you know, we've got Johnny A on the bench and we've got Jimmy Sakenis, um, two strikers, prolific goal scorers. And um, I'm sure at some stage, um, Andrew will give him a run at, you know, 3 no down. We've got nothing to lose now. And, throw an extra strike and maybe a couple of extra strikers on. Right, good on you, Carl. Thanks very much. Well, as so often happens when we talk to assistant coaches, Paul Wade, just after half-time, they seem to, uh, their whole complexion changes before their eyes as they're talking to us, and uh, he held up well in the circumstances there, Carl Helford, but, boy, it's going to be very, very hard for South Melbourne to get back from here. Yeah, I think that something that maybe andrew has got to look at is when the goals were conceded at 10 minutes just before half time just after half time i wonder if it's a concentration problem 
but uh, as Carl said, I mean, we, we're not going to make excuses for South Melbourne. They wouldn't want us to, but they're, they're crucial times when they're conceding this. Maybe they've just not tuned in properly yet. Mendez has already scored one. Olympic full of running now. Everybody wants the football. Chance here for number four. Wilson off the crossbar. Well, South Melbourne are all at sea here. Lindsay Wilson should have put that one away. And the visitors rescued by the woodwork. Maybe jet lag's a factor, but whatever the case, South Melbourne, very unlike themselves, particularly in defence. Well, I don't think they'd be blaming jet lag. I think it's just concentration. These guys are not concentrating at the moment. Aaron Bassett almost with a second. Jones on his near post. Well, it's coming thick and fast now. Olympic trying to find the killer goal. Aaron Bassett on Cardozo, I should say, and Aaron Bassett was free in the middle. Was that the right option? Yes, it was. And uh, Andy, you were right behind that one, was it? He was trying to go for the far post, and he was, as all good strikers do, trying to get his own name on the score sheet. Perhaps he could have sliced it square, but uh, you've got to get your striker scoring from there, and Pablo's done the right thing, even if the execution wasn't as he wanted. But what an amazing few minutes from Sydney Olympic. Well, they could have been five or six up now, couldn't they? Well, Scotty Thomas's ball was superb, but what about the ordinary defending from the white shirts, all standing flat-footed, while blue shirts ran right past them. And this is what we were talking about a little bit earlier, Mike, with the Osafides and Liparotti swapping for the sweeper's role. This is where the experience comes in, not getting caught flat-footed, not getting caught standing still. Well, no mercy at all from Sydney Olympic. They're looking to embarrass South Melbourne if they possibly can. And I'm sure Andy Harper, knowing these Sydney Olympic players, not only will they be keen to get another couple of goals, but they'll be probably even keener, I should say, not to concede one. It's very much a matter of pride, isn't it? It's very much so, Mike. And their defence this season has been one of their outstanding facets. But uh, they're very predatory, these players, and they'll, they get a sniff of blood, they'll go for it, a la Brett Emerton at the moment. Great ball from Emerton. And all it forced to put that away for a corner. Chris Jones saying that was my ball. Well, this is amazing, really. South Melbourne, who have won a lot more games than they've lost in the last three years, are getting torn to pieces here by Sydney Olympic. In the space of five minutes, Olympic could have had, and it's no exaggeration, five goals. Absolutely, and what a run from Brett Emerton. 70 metres at full speed, and not once did he have to check. He just kept running at the white shirts. Mendez. Away by Coveney. And handball, surely the referee has seen it, and that's a penalty. Well, that sums up South Melbourne's afternoon. Born Coveney. does not dispute the decision. He knows it's the right one. And look at the position of the referee. No option but to point to the spot. And Sydney Olympic with a great chance here to make it four. So it's Cardozo now trying to get his name on the score sheet. He's looking for goal number seven of the season. Number eight, in fact, Cardozo sends the kick in the wrong way. It's party time at Belmore. Still no signs of emotion from Branko Cellina. But it doesn't really get much better than this, does it? Oh, I tell you, he'll be smiling on the inside. He's not allowed to show any emotion now because he knows very well it could all change next week. Or, sorry, I should say Wednesday. So he's taking it all in. That's a great finish. That's a cool penalty, that is. Just let the keeper commit himself and then slot it the other way. 
Well, South Melbourne might have risen to the occasion against the best club sides in the world, but boy, they are being handed a football lesson here back in Australia. No sympathy whatsoever from Sydney Olympic. Mendez. Zorbis. Emerton. Everybody in a blue shirt, hungry for the ball. Wilson. Cardozo, corner, more pressure. Everything that South Melbourne do at the moment is reactive. They react to everything that Sydney Olympic do. Nothing is proactive. They never make anything happen themselves. But they're almost spellbound by every blue shirt out there on, there on the park. Maybe a little bit, bit of feeling sorry for themselves as well might be creeping in. They really need to knuckle down now and really not make this embar more embarrassing than it is. Well, it's almost too easy, isn't it? Mendez with the outside of the boot. Another corner, this time from the other side. What's going through the minds of those South Melbourne players right now? Nothing. That's the thing that's going through. The, they're, they're, they're numb at the moment. Look, there's not even anybody pointing the finger and screaming and shouting at each other. At least when you get torn apart like that and you create an argument with your teammates to maybe get them to pull their finger out, there is nothing going on. Mendez swings it in. And Mark Wilson, great save, Jones. Cardozo just over. Lindsay Wilson must be wondering when he's going to score. Brilliant save there from Chris Jones. Point blank, really. And this could so easily have been number five. Look at the static defending from South Melbourne there. The shot took a deflection. Another corner away by Orlick. Well, perhaps some respite at last for South Melbourne. And that is a unnecessary yellow card for Scott Bailey particularly in the circumstances, kicking the ball away. Paul Wade, I cannot remember the last time I've seen a South Melbourne side destroyed in this manner. Well, we were there for the first game of the season when they played Wollongong, and Wollongong gave them a bit of a hiding that night, but not like this. They are being torn apart here. And if only, and Postacoglu is probably thinking, I wish there was a three-quarter time because the boys need a, a bit of a rev up. Well, no wonder he's smiling, Gabriel Mendez. He's scored the goal of the game so far. And he's looking at a good win bonus as well. Olympic, surely now guaranteed top spot on the table, at least until Wednesday. So the title holders facing a team with serious title ambitions of their own. And who would dispute that fact on this evidence? Sydney Olympic on the top, the very top of their game. Kasija, hopeful shot more than anything. that scoreline Mike it's uh, prompted me to think about what the fans said to me as I was walking around behind the goal they said 4-1 today Wadey and I laughed at them boy they're laughing at me now Zlatko Arambasic has led the line and scored as well Psychology for Wade for those substitutes for South Melbourne right now. 
Will they be keen to get on or will they basically want no part of this one? <laughs> it's a very good question, isn't it? I, th I still think they'll be keen to get on because, look, they're still fighting for places. And the great thing about what's happening now is that those white shirts don't have to wait a week to make sure they get it right. Next Wednesday, they play each other again. So, uh, no, I think John Anastasiadis, uh, Jimmy Sakenis, uh, Richie Alligic, they want to make sure that they go on and do a job for the next, what is it, uh, 25 minutes, 20 minutes, make sure that Ange Postacoglu doesn't forget it. Mendez. Gets it back from Cardozo. Mendez. Emerton. Six blue shirts now on the edge of this area. Emerton swings it in. Cardozo's offside. Referee says play on. And at the other end of the field, Casija's offside. So Olympic with the free kick. Ladies and gentlemen, full time score for the Knights Stadium in Melbourne. Melbourne Knights 1, Cameron Cosmos 0. Cardozo. Wilson inside Lozanowski with ease. The cover was there from Liberotti. Spectacular athletic clearance there from Zorbis. Gutsiulis does well. Lozanowski pinned inside his own area. Trimboli. Well, Andy Harper, we talked about the pride collectively of Sydney Olympic in not wanting to concede a goal, but individually we've already mentioned that Franco Cellina has gone for three man markers tonight in his defence. And I'm sure Scotty Thomas will be equally keen to keep Paul Trimboli scoreless. Scotty Bailey will be keen to keep Vaughan Coveney out of the action and Chris Zorich will be keen to keep Michael Casida out of the action as well. Yeah, very much so. Uh, they've done their job really well tonight in the Olympic, so, so far at least. But uh, you've got to say in the second half, there's a number of South Melbourne players who haven't stepped up to the plate, which is disappointing. Uh, because they are a side in talent terms with so much to offer and of course they're defending their title and, and Andy Foster Coglu will be disappointed with, a, with the effort of a couple of his players uh, but having said that Sydney Olympic have really uh, taken advantage wonderfully haven't they as they make a change now Chris Kalantz is coming on for Slatko Aaron Basic yes Slatko Aaron Basic who's returning from injury so Branko Cellina deciding that he's done his job as he has Chris Kalantz you would hope would be eager now to stake his own claims as he draws the foul immediately after coming off the sideline and something was said there by Con Blaxis and that's going to get him into the notebook possibly or it's just a stern word from Simon Mikolev. Well, South Melbourne players will tell you that because of their success other teams tend to lift when they play them, but I wonder now that they've been to the World Club Championships, whether that is even more the case than it was before. Wilson. Mendez. Wilson. Too much on the cross. over 20 minutes left and perhaps South Melbourne have weathered the storm perhaps Sydney Olympic will be content with this very emphatic scoreline and perhaps the home team will go for the jugular as they have in the last 10 or 15 minutes
and Foster Codler yet to make a change. Well, the South Melbourne substitutes have been stretching. Neither the coach nor the players seem to be in too much of a hurry to get on. Thomas. Took the wrong option there, Thomas, but Fred Emerton has regained possession. We've seen Ante Juric go forward a lot for Sydney Olympic this season in the last 20 minutes or so, but probably in this situation there's no need for him really to go forward. He can just sit back, take it a little bit easy perhaps, and yeah. conserve his energy for Wednesday. Yeah, no, that's a fair call. Although he might not be going forward, but he is now marshalling his troops across the park. Every now and again he'll run past the back of Zoric and give him a word. Then across to Bailey and make sure he's doing his job. Come back over this side, continually adjusting something that, unfortunately, uh, Lipperotti hasn't done. Cardozo has options to his left. One of them is Wilson. Urich has found him. Needs a good cross here from Wilson. He cuts it to the edge of the area. Cardozo. Good Sulis. Emerton. Urged on by the crowd. Take on his man. He does so. Gets to the byline. And another corner. The cover was there from Lipperotti and Paulick. And Simon Mickler saying to Gabriel Mendez, let's get things happening a bit quicker. 12 to two, the corner count. It really is a fair indication in a lot of ways. The way this game has gone. Play by Coveney. Let me have a back though through Mendez. Kalantis. Mendez. Good effort there, and it's a goal. Well, Sydney Olympic and Fred Emerson gets the applause of the crowd. A superb goal. As it happened from Emerton to chip the goalkeeper, number five for Sydney Olympic. And it's all becoming a bit too much for South Melbourne. Look at the lack of pressure on the ball. That's what gives Brett Emerton the chance, the opportunity to look up and pick his point. Just a couple of passes before that as well. There was nobody really closing down. The body language from those white shirts is it absolutely atrocious at the moment if they could blow the final whistle now they would which yep. is a bit of a concern i think because now psychologically what are those players thinking they were tired before they went away maybe they've done well at rio now what they've got 17 rounds to go plus finals boy that is a long road i'm going to put you on the spot andy harper did brett emerton mean that or was that a cross I think on the replay it looked like he was trying to dig the keeper. My first reaction in general play was that he was trying to cross it to the far post, but I'm prepared to give Emo the benefit of the, the doubt. And I think he deserves it on today's performance. Uh, he's been pretty quiet for mine in the last couple of years generally, but today he's really shown some explosive uh, passages of play, and I, he certainly deserves to be credited with the goal fully intentionally. So five for Sydney Olympic. And five different goal scorers as well. Last year, Sydney Olympic relied so heavily on the goals of Pablo Cardozo. 
I'm sure Branko Celina will be thrilled to bits at the way the goals this season are being shared around. It's been tremendous, hasn't it? In the midfield, the strikers. No longer is it just the Pablo Cardozo show. Everybody wants a, a bit of a part of it. Zorbis. Wilson. See, he could have had a couple tonight as well, Lindsay Wilson. Probably the unluckiest player out there for Olympic, really. Well, that attempt to control the ball from Michael Procedure probably tells a large part of the story. South Melbourne are out on their feet here. It's their bad luck to come up against the Red Hot Sydney Olympic side, but they look so tired, South Melbourne. And there's not going to be much chance to rest. This is the first of five games in the next 12 days. A little bit of catching up to do. As another change is made by Branko Tolina. Zorbis will come off for Norman Tomei. And South Melbourne now about to make a double change, in fact. Kasija and Panopoulos are going to be making way. And Michael Kasija looking fairly devastated there as... You would expect, in fact, uh, Brian Lozanowski is coming to the sideline as well. Anastasiadis is on. Aligic is on. There is Richie Aligic. Like a triple by substitution by Ange Postacoglu. Well, that's a rare sight in itself, isn't it? Three subs at the same time. But uh, you can hardly blame Ange Postacoglu. Well, he can't do anything really tactically. I think the change is just, uh, just to make sure that he's got fresh pe personnel, that it doesn't get maybe any worse. And it possibly could, the way Sydney Olympic are playing at the moment. Alligates with his first touch. Zoricic. Here's Juric. Tomei. Wilson. Still going. Tomei. Wilson. Tomei! Well, what a goal that would have been. Well, as South Melbourne thought they were going to get a respite, they would have had second thoughts when they saw Norman Tomei make his way off the sideline, a player who has a great goal-scoring record. And he's found it hard to get a regular game this season. He knows where the back of the net is. 52 goals Norman Tomei has scored so far in the National League. And he's got plenty of football in front of him as well. Alligic. It's a Kenneth. Showing the line by Wilson. Forced inside. Now Alligic needs to get the ball in early. To Kenneth. Away by Juric though. Alligic again. Anastasiadis is calling for it at the back post. Bahutsis with a simple take. Super sub, John Anastasiadis, the only player to score in Brazil for South Melbourne. Emerton refuses to give up any possession, even at this late stage. One of many very, very good performers for Olympic this evening. 
and it's going to be just over 10 minutes for the final in the Olympic substitute Sebastian Sinizic and a well-deserved breather for Chris Zoracic who as we've already said has had a hard couple of weeks the sitting alike of or the igniting and discharging of any type of object between fireworks, single or smoke where is quickly prohibited. I think it will be arrested and charged. Well, Paul Wade, how should we judge this one? Has it been a very, very poor South Melbourne display or has it been a very, very good Sydney Olympic performance? I think it's been a very good Sydney Olympic performance. This was a South Melbourne side that were, had no excuses when they came here. Yes, they just got off a plane, but Sydney Olympic hadn't had the best sort of form either. So they had uh, a lot of reasons to feel sorry for themselves as well. It was all fair and square when they started this one. And they've just ground them into the ground, partly because Brett Emerton has run them into the ground himself. He's got good support from the midfield for, uh, from Gabriel Mendez and out wide Lindsay Wilson. But as individuals, as a team, they've destroyed them 5-0. It's not that South Melbourne have thrown the towel in. Mendez almost threaded it through to Kalantis. Coveney goes on a run, picked out by Gutsoulis. Bailey is quick enough. There's no doubt that Sydney Olympic are determined not to concede here. Interesting the record scores between these two. I'm just looking at the books here. 3-0 to South Melbourne at Middle Park back in 1979 was the record score for South Melbourne. And 4-1, the uh, sorry, that was for Sydney Olympic. And 4-1 at the Bob Jane Stadium in 96-97. And 4-1 in 89-90, the knockout cup final was the best score that South Melbourne have ever done. So this is a record between these two clubs. So Sydney Olympic rewriting the record books with this 5-0 result. Could be more as well. A reflective and Poster Coglu to do is talking away from the television cameras and the, the public eye. He doesn't show a lot on the bench. But you can be sure that in the right fashion he'll be telling his players after this one that their performance was well below expectation. Alantis. Cardozo. To Kenneth. Wilson gets back, but the ball breaks for Coveney. Anastasiadis now. Coveney, chance here for some. No, Coveney's put it wide, so the chance for a little bit of respect has gone begging. The best chance, you have to say, that South Melbourne have had. And a good understanding between Anastasiadis and Coveney. Wasteful finishing there from the Kiwi International. Chalina will be thrilled to bits for Wade, not just because of this performance, not just because of the result, but because it's his personal first choice team that he was able to field this evening. And that's going to tell Branko Chalina a lot about whether Sydney Olympic can win the title. He'll be thinking right now, although he won't be saying it, that if I can keep that 11 out there, then I really have got a good chance of getting the title. Spot on. Couldn't agree more.
Cardozo. Mendez. Tomei. Chance for number six. And Mendez denied by Chris Jones, who has probably kept the score in semi-respectable order. South Melbourne goalkeepers made a couple of saves, which really were out of the top of the draw, but it's going to be difficult here. And there it is. Number six for Sydney Olympic. Number two for Pablo Cardozo. And absolute humiliation for South Melbourne. Pablo Cardozo picked out by a great through ball from Lindsay Wilson. And this time, Chris Jones could do nothing about it. So, nine goals now for Pablo Cardozo this season. And just on that note, Andy Harper, I wonder if the turning point, if you like, of the season for Sydney Olympic came when the board decided a week or two ago that they would not sell Pablo Cardozo to Spain, where Cordoba were interested in him. He made a conscious decision to try and keep hold of him until the end of the season. And although there are many stars out there for Sydney Olympic tonight, perhaps the fact that they've been able to keep hold of their most influential player is going to win them the championship. Well, it's early days, of course, Mike, but uh, no club around the world wants to lose a player as significant in the scheme of things as Pablo Cardozo is to this club. And uh, so you could well be right. Uh, but there's a long way to go in this particular campaign. It, it's very disappointing though South Melbourne have gone belly up totally in the second half and uh, the trickle has become a flood. Oh, could there be another one? As Mendez is brought down, professional foul from Lipperotti. What's going to be the interpretation of Simon Mikulov? Is there going to be more salt rubbed into the wound? Lipperotti is wondering. It's only a yellow. Maybe the fact that there was cover arriving for Wade safe from Robert Liberotti there. <laughs> you can say that again. He can thank Iosifides. Blatsis was there. Orlich was there. He's a lucky man, Robert Liberotti, to be still on the park. Cardozo perhaps thinking here's a chance for a hat trick. Well, you just have to keep looking at that scoreline and shake your head. Six mil. Galantis. Mendez. Lindsay Wilson. there from George Gutsoulis. Mendez. 
and tipped over the bar by Chris Jones. Well, if not for that man there, this could have been double figures. Chris Jones has pulled out three or four great saves. Kalantis with a corner. We're into stoppages. And there it is. Oh, just wide from Bailey. Looking to get in on the act. And Chris Jones is saying, where was the marking? But he's wasting his breath, really, isn't he, Andy Harper? They are a collection of statues in their own penalty area, South Melbourne. Nicely put. Um, absolutely flat out on the canvas. Waiting for either the towel to be thrown in or the ref to to call a halt to these rather dismal proceedings but uh, I suppose this has to be said but I think this is what we're expecting or not we but certain experts around the world were expecting Man United to do for South Melbourne and uh, unfortunately for them it's taken one of their own kith and kin or some of their own kith and kin to put the sword to them they certainly have put the sword into the reigning champions and psychologically this is a fairly hefty blow to South Melbourne the beauty, I guess, in one sense, is that they do have a chance to make amends in just a couple of days against the same opponents. You wouldn't think they would lack for motivation in that game down at Bob Jane on Wednesday evening, South Melbourne. Tomei. Cardozo. Handball by Tomate. Yes, Mike, I'm sure South Melbourne were hoping to return to, to Bob Jane Stadium, their first excursion since their overseas exploits. And uh, we'd be looking to, to return to a, to a home crowd far more expectant than uh, may possibly be the case on this Australia Day. Six, uh, six on the jaw is not the sort of form you want to be taking to your home crowd, is it? I uh, just wonder, Andy, if uh, Sydney Olympic are thinking we might have made a rod for our own back here because uh, they have stung the pride of South Melbourne in some ways. Are they going to see the response on Wednesday? Well, you'd certainly like to think so. And look, they're still a champion team despite today's scoreline and performance. They're full of champion individuals and players. And I'd be very surprised if they put performances back to back like this one. To Kenneth. And it comes. Free header. And that sums up. South Melbourne's night. Absolutely unmarked for the first time in the game, Vaughan Coveney. He had plenty of goal to aim at and has headed straight into the arms of George Bahutsov. Kalantis. Cardozo gets the rebound. Kalantis. Fair tackle and a good one. To Kenneth. Trimboli has been given no quarter by Scotty Thomas, Paul Trimboli. And mercy at last for South Melbourne. The final whistle from Simon Mickleff. A devastating blow inflicted by a rampant Sydney Olympic side. Two goals from Cardozo, one each from Emerton, Aaron Basic, Mendez and Scotty Thomas. And Sydney Olympic, well, if there were doubters about their title credentials before this one, they have proved plenty of points with their best performance of the season. South Melbourne demoralised by the heaviest defeat they have received against these opponents. The final score here at a disbelieving Belmore Oval. Sydney Olympics 6, South Melbourne 0.